Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk HB Lovecraft. Before we get started, just wanted to remind you to please subscribe to our channel. So here on Let's Talk HP Lovecraft, a couple times a week we do short story reviews from none other than the horror master HP Lovecraft, and I'm slowly working my way through his complete fiction. Today's story is What the Moon Brings. It was written in 1922, but first published in May 1923 in the National Amateur. It is a page and a half long, so it's a really short one, quick read. Not much of an investment in time, but I think you'll find it worth it. Uh, the narrator, who has no name, uh, he begins by telling us that he hates the moon, and then the story itself explains just why. He describes one summer night walking in his garden, when the garden walls sort of fall away, uh, lit, lit by the moon, and he, he finds himself walking through forest and eventually coming to the sea. Uh, when he comes to the sea, he describes seeing dead faces in the water, and then as the tide uh, goes out and the water level drops, he, he sees what he calls sea worms uh, basically eating on all the dead of the world. And then as the, the, um, the level drops even further, he finds himself um, seeing the ruins of an ancient city, and then in that city, uh, the top of a statue. Uh, first, he, the forehead is revealed, but he fears looking at the eyes of this monstrous being, and before the water level can drop, revealing whoever this being was, uh, he casts himself into the water and um, basically sacrifices himself to the worms, thinking that it's preferable to die than to, um, to look upon something that has been buried beneath the sea that is obviously not meant for men to look upon. <laughs> and that is it, guys. Uh, quick analysis for you here. Um, you know, this is classic H.P. Lovecraft. Um, this is sort of the same theme as the Call of Cthulhu. Uh, something ancient is revealed in the sea, and it drives those who see it mad. Um, but differing from the Call of Cthulhu, or even At the Mountains of Madness, um, which is another story about finding ancient ruins and and beings and learning the history of the world. Um, this story has the quality of a dream, which I think works very, very well here. Um, because you know, we know this is fiction, but um, if you put it in the context of this dreaminess, um, it definitely um, adds another level of um, believability, I would say. Um, and then, of course, the idea that uh, death is preferable to the madness of looking upon this ancient past and these cold calculating um, gods um, from another time. Um, the idea that um, death is pre preferable to living, um, having seen that, um, I think is very standard in the Lovecraft um, canon. Um, and while... Um, while he treads this ground quite frequently, I think here it may be um, in possibly its best form. It just it's it's so poetically written that in the space of a page and a half, he's able to create an entire world, um, create a vibe, create an atmosphere, and then give it a satisfactory sort of conclusion um, that leaves you thinking and guessing. Um, does the character die, you know, after he casts himself into the sea? Uh, that's up to you, I guess. All right, guys, that is my quick review of What the Moon Brings, written 1922, published May 1923 in the National Amateur by H.P. Lovecraft. Tune in again soon for more H.P. Lovecraft reviews.